Hey everybody, so today we're going to talk a little bit more about the AK. I know a lot of my videos lately have been about the AK rifle, um, and I do like the AK, but it's not the only rifle that I like or appreciate. But the reason you're seeing so many videos coming from us right now about the AK is simply because of the large volume of high quality, well engineered, well thought out products that have become available for the AK. Now I can attribute a lot of that to the fact that first of all you have cheap ammunition. 5.45 by 39 for example, Russian surplus ammo is 130 bucks from AIM surplus for 1,080 rounds. That's just dirt cheap in today's market. Also, there's a lot of rifles available. Century Arms has pretty much flooded the market with the Romanian AKs, the Wasser 10s at a very good and affordable price. So the sales volumes through the roof. I've had a number of retailers tell me that they're selling more AKs a year right now than they are AR-15s. The AK has become the new AR. With these increased sales volume volumes, we're actually seeing more and more of these accessories that are becoming available for the AK. Up until the last few years, we've had pretty poorly engineered, thought out, pretty much what I consider novelty items that have come out for the AK. But because the new sales volumes are so high, companies are stepping into the arena with high quality accessories like what you see here. Now we're taking a look at accessories from the Mako Group, and Mako actually imports these parts from Israel. Uh, primarily these parts are manufactured by Fab Defense. Now Mako, the Mako Group imports these and they import them not only these accessories for the AK, but they also have accessories available for the AR-15 and other rifle systems. But today we're just going to take a look at the stuff that they're offering for the AK. Now, this particular rifle has been pretty much configured with all of the cool stuff that Mako has for the AK. We have a rail system, we have a polymer side folding stock, and we actually have two of these stocks here today. I'm going to show you both of these stocks. There's a difference between them. There's a, a big price difference and also um, a slight design difference between the two. And then we have the pistol grip. So we're going to take a closer look at all these accessories today and uh, let's get started. So let's take a look at this rail system. Now this rail system is a little bit different than other rails that I've reviewed. I do like the Midwest Industries rail system for example, but this rail is unique in that it actually extends out over the receiver. That allows you to mount more conventional optics like this one point or one to four power CMR Leatherwood scope. Now it's very rigid and how it mounts to the rifle is unique because it doesn't actually clamp to the barrel like other rail systems on the market. How this rail system mounts is it actually clamps the receiver and it also clamps the lower handguard retainer here in the front. You just have two bolts that you tighten, you slide it in, tighten them down and it clamps this rifle very rigidly. Again, it does not touch the barrel. Once you have the lower mounted, you can mount the upper rail system, it just sets in place, you have nine Allen head bolts that hold this upper rail system to the lower rail system. This thing is super rigid, it is very well mounted, it can't rotate, unlike, and I haven't noticed that the other rail systems actually rotate on the barrel, but you would think they possibly could with enough force applied. This can't rotate because it's actually clamping the receiver of the rifle. If it rotates, you're bending the receiver of the rifle. Now, the other thing that's kind of neat is it allows you to maintain your iron sights. The top of the rail system is cut so you can actually see down between the 1913 style rails and actually see your iron sights. It also allows you to disassemble the rifle without having to remove the rail system. So it's pretty well thought out. I like it. I like how rigid it is. And I like the fact that you can actually mount various different optics to this rifle including, like I said, this 1 to 4 power Leatherwood CMR. I'll stick this on here really quick and give you guys an idea of how this mounts. And it has the proper distance because this rail sits back far enough where you can actually get a good eye relief. And I'm going to talk about this stock here in a minute and how that works in conjunction with this optic. But not only can you mount standard optics like this scope, but you can also mount red dot sights. such as the same point, Comp M2, the cantilever mount, you can mount it to the rear or you can mount it forward if you prefer simply because you have these rails up front and that's what makes this mounting system unique. You can set an EOTech on here, but anyway, you get the idea. It is probably one of the most impressive rail systems because of the options that it gives you that other rail systems don't offer. So I really like it. It adds about 18, a little over 18 ounces to the rifle. So it does add a little over a pound to the rifle, but the weight 
is pretty evenly distributed, so it doesn't change the balance of the rifle too much. I can't really show you because I have it disassembled at the moment, but it doesn't really change the balance of the rifle all that much. It does make it a little bit heavier, but I wouldn't say that it's too heavy. I really like the rail system from the standpoint that it gives me a lot more options that other rails don't. I like how simple it is to mount and how rigid it is. This is a very neat rail system. Let's take a look at some of the other stuff that Mako has on this rifle. Alright, so let's talk about the stock on this rifle. Now, I do have two of these stocks here with me today that are slightly different. Now, the stock that's on this rifle is a polymer side folding stock. It has a little release button right here, and the stock folds to the left hand side of the rifle. It doesn't lock in the folded position, but it locks very rigidly in the extended position. Now, there are a lot of stocks out there that are available for AKs that are standard, you know, hardware for AKs, like the underfolder which isn't an easy conversion for a standard AK. You have to replace the retrunion drill holes. Most people don't do that. You have some surplus stocks like the Romanian side folders. Uh, there are some uh, also Polish Tantal side folders and other side folding stocks have been available on the market for a while. Those stocks have pretty much dried up. The days of buying those dirt cheap are over. You used to be able to buy those stocks on sale for 25, 30, 40 bucks. If you can find one available these days, they're well over $100 in many cases. So you don't have very many options for the AK to buy a high quality folding stock that's readily available. That's where this stock comes into play. This stock, as I said, has a polymer uh, body on it, has a polymer hinge. Now I'm going to show you the other stock here in a minute that has a Galil metal style hinge, but it's very simple to fold. And it has a unique feature that if you take a look at this lever here in the buttstock, you press this lever and lift up and you have a riser that pops up. Now you have several different positions that this riser will lock into, so you can customize it to whatever optic that you have mounted to the rifle. That's where this comes into play. I lock this scope on, I raise my riser, and now I have the perfect cheek weld for shooting with standard optics. That is a very unique feature in the AK market, and I really like this riser. Now with the riser extended on this particular model, you can actually fold it to the side of the rifle. It doesn't interfere with the function of the rifle at all. Let's take a look at the other one. Now, this one retails for $144, and I'll talk a little bit more about price here in a minute. On this arsenal, I have the Galil style folder. Now, this hinge system is identical to the actual Galil rifle. You can collapse, or I'm sorry, fold this stock by simply pulling down on it like a Galil and then it folds to the side. It doesn't lock in the folded position, but it locks very rigidly in the extended position. Let's see if you guys can take a look at the hinge here. This is all metal construction, and this one also has the riser in it as well. Now I have a Russian, or actually um, a, P a POSP scope on here. It's a Russian style scope on this rifle with this riser up this scope works perfectly. You're used to having your cheek floating out there in space when you're shooting a scope like this or even as I showed you the CMR mounted to the, uh, the IAC 74. With this riser on these stocks you don't have to do that. This is one cool feature and it makes these things infinitely more shootable. I really like that. Now this stock with its Galil style hinge is a little bit more expensive. This one retails for around $360. I think it's $358. That's pretty expensive, you would think. Now, let's talk about the price of these stocks. First of all, the stock installs easily and doesn't require that you remove the rear tang. You can see the rear tang is actually in place here on the rifle. I took the full stock off. This was a full stocked rifle originally. I took the full stock off, slid this stock right into the receiver, and it comes with the mounting hardware. It's one bolt. It shores up, and this is one rigid stock in this rifle. It's very firm. So it's super simple to install. but most people that have seen this particular stock, the Galil style stock, and it's $360 price tag, they go, oh my gosh, that's really expensive. An arsenal rifle like this SGL retails anywhere between $750 and $800. If I were to buy this with a Russian side folding stock, which are very limited production from KVAR and Arsenal, uh, some of them actually just hit the market recently, but those, stocked, or those, those stocks on these rifles will raise the cost of this rifle from the $750 to $800 range up to $1,200. You buy an $800 rifle, put a $350 stock on it, you're roughly in the same ballpark. Actually, it's still a little bit cheaper, and in my opinion, this stock 
is a lot better than even the Russian side folder stock, and that's a stock I really like. Now, with this particular Galil style hinged folder, when you fold the stock, if you have that riser up, and this is one of the, the, uh, the downsides to this particular right hand side folder, if you have that riser up, the charging handle can't be operated. If I were to fire the rifle like this, it would actually cause a malfunction. If you were to fold, you need to fold the stock, you need to put that riser down. And then it won't interfere with the function of the stock at all. To deploy, you just pull and it locks open. Now this stock is 10 and a half inches long from the end of the receiver here to the butt pad. That's 10 and a half inches. The stock on the IAC 74 is 10.75 inches, 10 inches, 10 inches and three quarters. So it's a little bit longer. And most of that length is right here in this polymer hinge. Now people will say that they're concerned with the polymer and want the Galil style folder. Guys, I'm telling you, this polymer stock is exceptionally rigid. This sucker is well built, and that's just not your average plastic. This stuff is hard as a rock. Very positive locking. Again, doesn't move. Very rigid. I wouldn't worry about banging this thing around at all. It's very solid. Um, at 144, this thing is really affordable. And the cost of the other stock at 360 is all in that Galil style folder. What the Mako group has told me is that they've actually licensed or actually buying actual Galil hinges and that's why the cost of that stock is so high. So this polymer stock is a great deal at 144. It works great. It is just a bit long. The downside to this stock is it's just a little bit longer. Um, if you don't have long arms like I do, you might find it a little bit long. This I would say is uh, similar to a NATO length butt stock on an AK. The other stock with the Galil style hinge a little bit shorter, and I actually do prefer the length of the stock because I like a shorter stock on the AK. So, simple to install. The price of this one might turn a few folks off, but I actually don't think it's that bad. We take all things into consideration. You can actually put a superior stock on your SGL or any other uh, AK out there than even what the Russian hardware is. Um, 358 bucks doesn't seem that bad to me, especially for the quality of the stock that you get. And at 144, this is a heck of a deal because you can buy a Romanian a side folding stock for 100 bucks or for 44 bucks more. You can get a high quality stock that's actually used by a military in the world, um, the IDF. And to me, that speaks volumes. If the Israelis use it, those guys are always in, in the thick of it, right? So anyway, let's take a look at the pistol grip next and um, we'll talk a little bit more about this rail as well. Let's talk about this Mako Defense pistol grip. Now the AK standard AK pistol grip is probably not the most comfortable pistol grip out there. I'll just be blunt and say that it's probably the worst pistol grip out there. It feels like a paintbrush handle. Um, and here we have a standard AK pistol grip. It's narrow. If you have big hands, most Westerners find this thing to be kind of, you know, kind of a pain in the butt to use. It's very narrow and skinny and just doesn't fill your hand, doesn't feel very good at all. Now this Mako grip actually fills your hand. It has nice palm swells, has uh, finger grooves which aren't too pronounced and it just fits perfectly in my hand. I really like it. Now this grip just bolts right on. You just have you just take your standard OEM bolt out and you can reuse it, put this grip right on. It doesn't take very much time at all. And here I have a US Palm battle grip. Now you've seen me talking about these battle grips in the past. I have them on a number of my AKs. I really like them. Again, they fill the hand of a big-handed shooter like myself. They feel very good, have a very natural grip angle. And here you can see it next to the Mako grip. Let's see if I can get my fingers out of the way. So you can see the contour is very similar. And this grip retails for around $33. This grip also has, grab my bullet here, a little bullet button. You push in here, trap door opens up, and you have a storage compartment inside. What's kind of unique is you have a sub compartment that just slides in. Looks like, it'll, looks like it will hold AA batteries for sites like the EOTech. You can leave it out and have a large opening here. This just slides in, and the trap door closes. Again, you can open and close it with just a simple bullet tip. Locks very positively. It's a polymer grip. It feels very good. It's textured on the back. 
And again, you can see how thick that thing is. Here it is next to the U.S. Palm. Overall, I really like the feeling of the grip. I like the angle. I like how it feels in my hand. I actually like it better than the Hogue grip. The Hogue grip is another comfortable grip. So at 33 bucks, I think this is a sound investment as well. It goes nicely with the rifle. It fits the other Mako accessories. And I really like how it feels. It increases the shootability, in my opinion, of the rifle considerably. 33 bucks well spent. Some final thoughts on these Mako Group accessories for the AK. This rail system, the VFR AK rail, this rail system is unique in the marketplace. It's unique in that how it mounts to the rifle. It doesn't actually touch the barrel. It mounts to the receiver. It's unique, and I actually like it. It makes for a very rigid mounting system. Also, something I didn't mention is you can actually see the cleaning rod in here. Some rail systems that are out there, the cleaning rod may or may not actually go back into the rifle. Uh, this, this rail system is designed so that the cleaning rod can actually be put back into the rifle without any issue. The rail system extends out over the receiver, which is also unique in the marketplace. It allows you to put sights a little bit closer to your eye, like this red dot sight, this EOTech. I actually prefer my red dot sights a little bit closer to my eye. Some folks like them further out, and that's where these rails out front come in handy. But also, this extended rail allows you to mount regular traditional optics, magnified optics, which makes it, again, unique in the marketplace. It's easy to install. It's only 18 ounces to the rifle. It allows you to continue to use your, your uh, cleaning rod, and it installs in a few minutes. It's neat stuff. I really like this rail system. The stocks, we have two different options. We took a look at two different stocks from the Mako Group for the AK. Um, this one is the polymer side folder that has a push button that allows it to fold to the left. We also took a look at the Galil style hinge, which is all metal construction on the hinge, and that folds to the right. Both stocks, I think, are very well built. They're very rigid, and both stocks install to the rifle without modification to the rifle. You don't have to cut the rear tang off. Um, with other stocks that are out there, like the Ace side folders, you have to take a Dremel and cut your tang off your rifle. On a seven dollars $800 arsenal, I'm not going to cut the rear tang off if I can avoid it. You don't have to do that with either of these stocks. This riser makes this stock very unique in the marketplace. This is something I've been waiting for and something that I can't live without now that I've actually used it. I love that riser. The pistol grip, I like a little bit plainer design on the pistol grip, something like what we saw on the um, US Palm Battle Grip. However, ergonomically, what this thing lacks in aesthetics, in ergonomics, it's outstanding. This thing feels awesome on the AK, and I'm going to continue to use these pistol grips. These are very good pistol grips, and for 33 bucks, it's a heck of a deal. Overall, the way this rifle is configured, I think this is a great setup. I really like the rail to the buttstock, the pistol grip. This rifle is set up in a way that I can really use, and it's, uh, it's very pleasurable, uh, pleasurable to shoot. The Mako Group can be reached at the URL at the bottom of the video here. You can check out their prices and availability on their website. If you have any questions about any, any of these accessories, you can reach us on our Facebook page, which is www.facebook.com forward slash military arms, or you can post questions to the YouTube channel, but we prefer you actually use our Facebook page. Anyway, everybody, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you guys soon.